pi. Previously, I asked you a question. The question is, for a graph of gravitational potential against the distance, what is the physical meaning of the slope? And also, what is the physical meaning of the area under the curve? So if you haven't thought about that yet, please pause the video now and think about it. A few moments later. Okay, so let me explain to you. And by the way, this is a thumbnail in the previous video. I'm not sure if you understand that. The grid are distort. I mean, normally grid are you know regular, but these grid are distort because these are representing the 2D of the potential, okay, near a massive object. So um, you can take it, take it like that. So imagine like on the top surface, that is the zero gravitational potential energy. That is when we say uh, it's infinitely far from the object, the GPD will be zero. And when you get close to it, then it will become negative, more negative, very negative. Okay, so, well, then I hope you understand uh, what it means by this stand. And so to understand the area and the slope, then obviously you have to use calculus. So for area, it will be integrating the V with respect to R, and while for the slope, it's going to be differentiating the V with respect to R. Let's look at the area first. So we can change the expression of V with the equation that we have, negative gm over L dl. And so if you have learned calculus before, you know you can take out the constant negative gm, and this will become integrating 1 over L uh, with respect to L, and that is going to give you natural log L. It doesn't really mean anything. Yes, it doesn't mean anything. Think about this alternatively in physics. The unit of potential is joule per kg. And now you integrate it with distance. That means you just simply multiply with meter m. Can you suggest what these could be? Now, let's think about the slope. For the slope, then we again uh, change the expression of V into negative GM over R. So we are going to differentiate this with respect to R. And as you know, it's going to be GM negative as a constant and the R below will become R square and you got a one negative again. And so eventually you got GM over R square. Looks familiar. Yes, this is simply the gravitational field strength you learn. Oh my god! Wow! Oh my god! And so this opens up a new way for us to see this graph for now. Because if you now look at the slope at different points, for example here and here, then well, you can tell this slope and this slope, and obviously, well, this is not very good, this slope, right and so let's say this is one this is two and for one it is much 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 steeper than number two right even though they are in the same direction so gravitational field strength is related to the force per unit mass right so no matter what mass you have uh, no matter like whenever they are here in number one then they will have a greater force and therefore probably a greater acceleration so uh, when you try to look at this graph, you can interpret it in a very interesting way. Think about this. This curve looks like a mountain, right? I mean, a normal mountain, a very smooth one, of course. Think about this. When you have a ball right here, what will happen to the ball? It will simply roll down to the hill. And that's very normal. If you have another ball here, then it will also roll down. But then this one, if I call this A, this to be B, A will definitely accelerate much, much quicker than B because it is steeper. So that's the same idea as in the gravitational field strength at that point is much greater. In other words, if you somehow find on this graph, there is a point where it literally have zero slope is horizontal that means the ball will just stay there because there's no force acting 
on that ball in particular. Okay, so this is a very interesting relationship between the gravitational potential and gravitational field strength. Now, let's try to practice what you learned. Try this question 5 on page 8. Pause the video now and I'll explain the answers to you. A few moments later. Okay, so if you don't know how to do this, but you just want to get maybe a hint, then I'm going to give you the hint right now and then you can pause again whenever you want. You may be wondering, uh, how come there's only like so little information? I mean, the graph, yeah, tell you the potential, but then the distance is in an arbitrary unit. So you can't really use the equation we learned because those are in SI unit in meter. So you can't really substitute anything. So, um, and they want you to find the mass. And so that is something very strange because it seems you don't have enough information and of course it's not because there's a hidden information that is in the graph you can use and that is like I said uh, you can imagine this potential line across the whole distance as in a mountain so if you have an object then like right here then it will get close to the planet if it is here it still get close to the planet but then if it is at right here then it will get close to the other side it will go it will roll and get close to the moon so the one very special point here is when you have zero slope and that is probably be well it's a bit hard to judge to be honest i would take it as here i think and so this is a point where the gravitational potential no the gravitational field strength is going to be zero literally and let me just find out the value for these um, there are 10 grid and so 0 0.2 is the interval so I think each grid worth 0 0.02 right and so uh, this should be 0 0.74 with this information that we can start to construct a very useful equation and that is uh, saying the force on both sides will equal which is f of the planet and the f of the moon uh, gravitational force of course will be equal so g big m of the planet small m of the mass over the distance so this will be 0 0.74 square and then this would be gm of the moon small mass and then this should be 1 minus 0 0.74 bracket square and since the, these things would of course cancel out and you would have the mass of the planet according to what is requested by the question uh, mp over mm or let, let's keep it as consistent notation so big M P and big M M and uh, rearranging the equation then you'll be able to find the expression which I find is about 8.10059 so I will leave it as 8.1 and of course if you have a different choice I mean this is a little bit ambiguous so if you have another choice of the uh, equilibrium point then the answer here may be slightly different part b it asks you the speed which a probe would be launched from the surface of the planet in order to arrive the surface of the moon so uh, again uh, it's very useful to interpret this as a mountain as i said uh, whenever the object is right here it will try to accelerate this way and then if you want to have the minimum speed you don't want to launch it at a really high speed i mean of course it, you, you can just spam you know <laughs> as much as you can but then that definitely is not not what the question want to ask uh, i supposed to be asking you the minimum speed that you need to launch so if you think about this then obviously you just have to send the ball this is a bit like those kind of game where you have to shoot the ball to this and then if you are not fast enough then the ball will roll down 
all right so you you, you want to probably uh, shoot faster so go up higher and then if you're up to this it's still not enough it's going to go back down so the minimum speed you need is to send this probe whatever mass over this point because once you go over this point slightly like 1 mm more than this point then automatically uh, this probe this mass would naturally go towards the moon instead amazing all right so by looking at the y-axis then you know the initial let me zoom in more the initial wow is a bit hard to to read I okay I'll just take it as the middle so negative 6.5 will be the reading and then at this point which will be like the highest I would take it as one grid lower so that should be negative 0 0.2 okay and from this uh, we can find out the potential difference delta V is going to be well obviously 6.3 I think you can express it yourself uh, not to forget it is in Terra so Terra is 10 to the power of how much we have K we have M mega we have giga we have Terra so uh, 3 6 9 12 yeah 12 all right by recalling the capacity of the computer file then you can or, or your hard disk then you can recall this and so this would be the potential you need to overcome joule per kg and then multiply with the mass so then wait a second oh we don't have the mass of the probe but then we just need to find the speed and so um, again some trick will be needed and that is uh, we can uh, recall the work done will equal to the m times delta v so times the m here and then that work done is the work done you have to overcome using the kinetic energy so we can say half mv square equals to the one that we find here so uh, small m 6.3 times 10 to the power of 12 and so magically the m will got cancelled out and so eventually you should be able to find a v as something like 3549 something so i'll take it as 3.5 times 10 to the power of 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 meter per second so that will be the speed you need to launch for this probe in order to send it to the moon is that really how the rocket get launched sorry it is not the calculation that we did here is literally having a planet and the moon by the way the planet is not necessarily the earth um, but then what you do is you have the line joining these two planets and you literally have the probe send directly launching towards the moon and expecting this uh, can go through you know the attraction of the your original planet and going to the moon but then think about the speed that you have when you're landing on the moon that would be a disaster definitely and so here's a diagram from nasa talking about one of the mission that they took uh, from of course sending a spaceship from the earth getting close to the moon and so you can see the trajectory is more like i mean complicated of course it's not going to be strict because like i said uh, the landing speed is not going to be feasible and not to mention about the fuels that you need will be much much more i'll put the link in the description below and if you're interested go and check it out it's rocket science all right so in this video you learn more about gravitational potential and how that is related to the gravitational field strength do really remember the secret and energy that I told you about uh, this as a mountain and the ball whether it roll to the left or roll to the right. I hope you enjoy learning physics with me. If you do so, please hit the like button now and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you again in the next video. Bye.